Nvidia launched the RTX 4070, and based on the stock available, it was an unmitigated disaster. Is it really that bad? And should you consider buying this GPU? Let's get into it. The 4070 is the fourth GPU to launch for the RTX 40 series generation, and stock of the 4070 is plentiful everywhere. This makes it the third launch in a row where the 40 series did not sell out. The 4080 never sold out and has been plentiful since it launched in November. The 4070 Ti launched in January and it has been available everywhere. Now the RTX 4070 launched and there are very few buyers for this GPU. Many speculated that sales of this GPU would be very robust since it is the most affordable, but those sales did not materialize. I have several accounts of Micro Center stores having 300 or more GPUs available on launch day, and even when they opened their store an hour earlier at 9 a.m., there was no line. Even UFD Tech did a road trip and found not one other person waiting in line. The biggest telltale for me was when Micro Center allowed you to reserve a GPU online the very next day after launch. You see, for the launch of high demand products, Micro Center does not allow you to reserve a GPU online. You have to show up in person to get that GPU. Take for example the 4090. Even to this day, six months after launch, you are not able to reserve a 4090 online. You have to show up in the store to claim your GPU. Well, for the 4070, that only happened on launch day. The very next day on April 14th, you could reserve your 4070 online. Also, Newegg has plenty to choose from. So does Amazon and Best Buy. The only 4070 GPU that I saw sold out was the Founders Edition at Best Buy. Most 4070s have a large three fan design and is quite overkill for a 200 watt TDP GPU. The sleek two fan design of the Founders Edition, which is really like a mini version of the 4080, was the only one interesting to me. Now I have the worst luck in being able to get any GPU on launch day, but I was able to get a Founders Edition GPU and it will be delivered next week. Again, this is the third GPU launch that did not sell out. Three out of four launches this generation and no one is buying them. Poor Nvidia. You can't generate FOMO if no one is buying them. Not even scalpers are buying these. Is the 4070 GPU really that bad? When you look at the performance shown in the reviews, there really was no surprises. When I did my leak analysis of the 4070 way back in January, I said that the 4070 is likely to be about a 3080 in performance, with a price at $599. And that is exactly what we got. Looking deeper into the reviews, you find the 4070 beats the 3080 at its target resolution of 1440p, and it also beats it at 1080p, while the 3080 takes a small win at 4K. And that is to be expected given the limited memory bandwidth. And that is the same issue with the 4070 Ti that I discussed and showed in my comparison with my 3090. When I look at the RTX 40 series generation, this GPU is the least egregious of all of them. And I expect that to be true even after Nvidia releases the 4060 and 4060 Ti. If we stand back and take a look at what Nvidia has offered gamers this generation, it has been a disaster. When reviewers comment on the RTX 40 series, there is this notion that the 4090 is the darling of this generation. That is the only one worth buying. However, that is always done with a comparison to the RTX 3090. Quite frankly, the 3090 at 1499 was crap. I've said it before, when you compare something to crap, you can only conclude if that something is more crappy or less crappy. If you want to compare it to something that did offer gamers good value, compare it to the 3080. Reviewers told gamers to buy the 3080, not the 3090. I even covered that when the 3090 was announced. The 4090 has a place in the world and is a flagship GPU for those who just want the best and price is not a concern. It's not about trying to get good value. Because what Nvidia doesn't want you to know is that when the 5090 comes out, you're going to lose big time money, four figures, in one generation. I covered that in detail in a previous video, link above and below. It's something reviewers never talk about. I'm not judging, and if you can afford it, great. Just go into it with your eyes wide open. The 4080 offered 50% more performance for 72% more money. The 4070 Ti offered 45% more performance for 33% more money. 
but it was still an $800 GPU when you can find it at stock periodically at that price. Now the 4070 offers you 30% more performance for 20% more money. This is a very poor performance per dollar generational upgrade, but not as bad as the others. The 4070 is not the best of this generation, it's the least worst of this generation. It's the least egregious. It is the price increase of the 4070 that is less difficult to swallow than the others. $100, it's definitely not good. Considering you can easily pick up a used 3070 for $300 to $350 just makes this even worse. What this 70 series GPU failed to do was generate any level of excitement. Previously, the launch of a 70 series GPU would be very exciting because historically, the 70 series GPU would give you top of the line 80 Ti levels of performance from the last generation. For example, the 3070 gave you 2080 Ti levels of performance. The 2070 Super gave you 1080 Ti levels of performance. And the 1070 gave you 980 Ti levels of performance. This 4070 only gives you 3080 levels of performance. If you wanted 3080 levels of performance, you could have just picked up a used 3080 six months ago for $450 to $500. This is not exciting. It is just not enough to get people to run out and buy it. And it just further confirms if you don't have to upgrade, then this is the skip it generation. Who should consider buying this GPU? Only those willing to buy new and want very good 1440p performance should consider this GPU. Also, those looking to build or upgrade a small form factor computer should consider this GPU. It is the smallest and most efficient of this generation. And if you fit that criteria and are struggling with newer titles, you may want to consider this GPU. For example, if you have a 2070 Super, then this GPU gives you 78% more performance, which is a sizable upgrade. And if you have a 2070, it offers almost twice the performance. And people who purchased a 2070 or 2070 Super typically pay between $550 and $600 for AIB models. The 2070 Super was a 215 TDP GPU, and the 4070 is 200 watts, so you don't need to upgrade your power supply. And if you have a 1070 Ti, this is about a 2.4 times increase in performance. And if you're still hanging on to your 1070, then this is a 2.7 times increase in performance. For all of these cases, the performance uplift will be very noticeable and you will get the latest in terms of DLSS, which will only help. I'm not gonna say that the 599 price is a good deal. It's just the least bad of all the ADA GPUs. I would not recommend waiting for the 4060 and 4060 Ti models coming out soon. I believe those will be very disappointing. Why? The 4070 Ti, the 4080, and the 4090 all had more shaders than the previous generation GPUs that they replaced. The 4070 is the first with the exact same amount of shaders as the 3070, and the 4060 and 4060 Ti will have less shaders than the 3060 and 3060 Ti that they will replace. Don't expect miracles. If you enjoy analysis videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below if you are considering a 4070 or waiting for the 60 series of GPUs. Up next, I'll be looking at power scaling and performance comparisons of the 4070 to the 3070, and I'll also be looking for CPU bottlenecks to understand if you should also upgrade your CPU. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.